Alexandra Morton has been called the Jane Goodall of Canada because of her passionate fight to save British Columbia's wild salmon. salmon. Her uh, book, Not On My Watch, gives us a startling and original insight into uh, orca and salmon migration and the fight to keep part of this earth alive and joins us now to tell us more. Good morning. So great to meet you virtually. Good morning. This uh, story actually started, uh, you were American, you were studying orcas in California and your work took you to Canada, which became your home. And then you became passionate about the plight of wild salmon, which is actually crucial to your beloved orcas, right? That's right. Um, when the salmon farming industry moved into the area where I was studying orca, I thought it would be a great idea. I mean, they looked harmless and they would take pressure off the wild salmon. but. The problem with the farms is they are feedlots and pathogens amplify in them, parasites, uh, viruses and bacteria. And then they pour out of the farm and the young wild salmon trying to migrate past are experiencing levels that they're just not built to survive. Yeah, um, reading this um, made me think or, or be glad that the fisheries department isn't handling the pandemic right now because uh, basically that's what's happening in the water. The sea lice problem. Tell us about that. The sea lice are a natural little parasitic crustacean um, and they have a very hard life so they don't usually uh, turn into epidemics but in the farms they do because it's so easy for them to find new hosts and the salmon aren't migrating and so billions of larval lice are flowing out of these pens in a, in a blizzard and the little wild salmon, salmon are only this big when they first come out of the rivers. Uh, and they're just eaten to death by the lice and so I've been studying this, uh, well this will be my 22nd year. You've got a great line that um, fish farmers and only farmers that don't shovel their own manure related mm -hmm. to these, uh, you know, that's this, right. so, these pathogens that's and every, everything that is in the water during this, their, their run. Yes, so they're uh, sort of a cube of net that's hanging down from an yeah. aluminum and walkway and everything just flows into the ocean. So the only, the only problem they have, oh, this is a disease, um, winter ulcer, that is a bacterial disease that is spreading that we're very concerned about as well. They just need to put themselves into a tank and then they're fine. Yeah, it's maddening how, how this is actually impacting the gene pool because it's just not natural. The salmon that successfully make the run aren't the salmon that, uh, oh, that's absolutely that are being caught. Yeah. No, yeah, that's absolutely right. So salmon uh, have been brought down to such low levels. Our biggest river in Canada, the Fraser River Sockeye, only 20 fish return to some of the spawning areas of that river. And where I live, it's down to one-tenth of one percent. So we've gotten very low, but the Minister of Fisheries is making some decisions based on First Nations and farms are being removed. And so one of the things I'm studying this year is what happens when you take several million Atlantic salmon out of the migration route of the Pacific salmon. I'm expecting to see uh, the fish look much healthier and, and rebound. Now, a hot spot is the Discovery Islands. This is actually in the courts right now because I, that's a real narrow bottleneck, isn't it? And it's kind of a yeah. microcosm of all the problems. Yes, yeah, so one third of all of British Columbia salmon end up going through these very narrow channels. And these three companies, all with head office in, in Norway, they're, they're global operators. They operate in these waters. And uh, just the amount of disease and sea lice is just uh, incredible. So the problem has been that there's a Fisheries and Oceans Canada was given two mandates, one to promote salmon farms and one to protect wild salmon. But because fishermen aren't as organized as the salmon farms, CFO ended up being much more proactive about protecting the salmon farm. And this has put our wild salmon at extreme risk. Now, and let's bring it back to the orcas and how are they impacted by all of this? Well, orcas eat salmon. And so as the salmon go, so the orca go. It's uh, an alarming situation, but we can turn it around if we just take these feedlots and put them in tanks, use the waste, to grow other crops. Uh, it's happening all over the world. Every yeah. operator that begins land-based has huge investment. Could so history I'm repeat here? We only have a, f a few seconds left, but uh, what happened in the cod industry in the East Coast? Is there a threat of history repeating here? Absolutely, this, is, this was the ministers not listening to the scientists in their own department. 
but hopefully they will listen now because it's all in the book. <laughs> hopefully everybody gets this book and we'll link up where, well, it's available everywhere, not on my watch. Alexandra Martin, thanks so much for sharing with us. Thank you so much. You have a great day.